Well, do you want to introduce yourself a little yeah. bit? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, my artist name is Katie Moonbean. And I'm a musician and a dancer specializing in hula hoop dance and movement. Um, I live in Toronto, Ontario, and uh, I, as uh, a musician, I am in like several kind of projects also based around Toronto, Canada. Um, yeah, I just graduated from Humber College. Uh, just got my degree, Bachelor of Music, which is who knows what that means now. And um, yeah, that's a little bit, little blurb about me. Uh, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Your I love your website and your bio is so like magical. And <laughs> how did you, how did you come up? Like what, what, how, what? How high were you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's kind of been this ongoing joke. Okay. So um, uh, when I was born, uh, my my grandmother gave me the middle name Katie Moon Beam, mm. and um, and so kind of like over the past couple of years, I've been like thinking about myself as a business or you know being more kind of in a business mind frame and and um and so I was like oh you know like do I want to use my real name which is Valentina um as an artist or or what have you and so at first I started to use my middle name Kitty Moon Beam as kind of like a an email and um like a representative like an artist representative if you will and and then throughout 2020, I was really like conceptualizing myself as an artist and kind of where I want to go and how my name and my brand, uh, you know, really makes a difference as to kind of, you know, how you're wanting to shape yourself and present yourself um, as a musician and artist. And so... Uh, I came up with the name Katie Moon Bean and then like I don't know maybe a year ago and have just been like riffing off of these like silly little rhymes with Katie Moon Bean queen of the bean bean cream dream team and like all these funny little things and and then I got inspired halfway through last year to to make a website for myself and and like kind of uh, create this like cosmos based around this like silly character and so as I was just like filling in slots for my bio and stuff like that I just kind of like riffed off of this like silly rhyme scheme and and uh, yeah and like I don't know if I'm gonna keep it like that forever but that's I love it, it is right now <laughs> I love it have you heard of uh, Sasha Fierce no apparently that's like I this might be like fact checked and I might be found that I'm wrong but I heard that that is um Beyonce's alter ego or something when she goes on stage okay um and I've been thinking a lot about this like alter ego type concept mm -hmm. um, and is it is it kind of like that for you like oh yeah definitely yeah. um it's yeah, because like, I guess my bio before was just so like, bland, and very just like factual, like, go went to school here, like credentials and like, per performed at the Royal Ontario Museum five times and like, just very kind of like cut and paste and dry. And like, I was just kind of like, mm, I'm not really into that. Like, if you know, if I'm sending somebody like, more information about me or like a cv or something then yeah okay like you get the the bullet points of the facts of my experiences and history but for a bio i was really like how can i like make this more fun and i think like i still need to put more work into it and and kind of um create you know like your 100 word 50 word 25 word what have you but um yeah like i it's just like flipping from the like Valentina 
person to like this character persona. And it's so much easier to like create story around a, like a fictional character or, you know, than it is about your own personal self. At least I find that to be true. And so I just kind of like flipped into that mind frame of like, okay, like this is my make-believe character who, who I'm, you know, embracing when I'm on stage or performing or what have you. Um, and so, yeah, Thank it's you. like, it's silly, it's sexy, it's, you know, whatever. <laughs> I love it. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Is that your, your name when you're performing music as well? Or is that specific to hula hooping? Um, yeah, music, music and dance. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I'm a musician, like when I'm performing with other projects, uh, I, you know, it's Valentina as a session musician or as a performing artist with other bands, but yeah, Katie Moonbean is like the, the artist and dancer because it's, it essentially, and eventually, um, my goal is once I'm back on stage, uh, or, in internet world or whatever is like performing my music and then like taking uh like a minute or two to like dance with my hula hoop to a song that I just like created on stage kind of thing yeah. okay um, so cool. yeah just to like incorporate those things yeah yeah <laughs> that's great kind of like using looping and stuff like that yeah 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 I'm that's awesome yeah I've been exploring kind of the world of of looping and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. looping yeah. and hooping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All and I love circles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was going to say it. Did, all right. Did you know I had a circle tattoo? I have a circle tattoo. I didn't know that. I, would it be weird if I showed you my foot right now? No, I don't think yeah. so. I need some of your dance classes to aid me. In uh, oh, nice. I like that spot. Yeah. yeah nice I have a like it's not a full-on circle but it's like a geometric tattoo in the exact same spot on my foot would you like to see it yes <laughs> okay <laughs> might as well show and tell right <laughs> okay let's see it I don't know oh it's wow big. It's big you had a much easier time lifting your foot good job <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. yeah yeah I got that uh, the last time I was in Cuba, I like was just about to leave for my plane ride home. And I was like, I have 40 pesos left. How am I going to spend this? <laughs> so I just went and got a tattoo, which was a really fun and really cool experience. And I found out after the fact that tattoo shops are actually illegal in Cuba. So I was like, whoa, okay. Breaking the law. Yeah. I didn't know that that's what I was doing. But the funny thing is that the next day I had a show at the Horseshoe Tavern with a band that I'm in, um, the Johnnies. And I didn't consider like the healing factor, especially mm -hmm. of, a ta of, of a tattoo on your foot. And so I'm like dancing away on stage and like I'm in, I have the adrenaline of being on stage. So I'm totally fine. Like nothing's bothering me. But as soon as I got off stage, my foot was throbbing and I was like, ah, I hope I'm not like ruining this tattoo that I just got. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Well, how did, do you want to talk about how you got into hula hooping? Is yeah. it, what's the official term? Cause I know that there's hoop dancing is originally a, an indigenous uh, dancing style. Mm -hmm. Is what you do connected to that peripherally or um, is it a completely different form? I, yeah, I mean, I, so I, I use the term hula hooping just so that um, people don't uh, make, like, just so that I'm clear that I'm not, I'm not posing as though I'm like uh, doing traditional indigenous hoop dance because I'm not, I'm not trained in that way. And I'm all, I'm not indigenous. Um, and so I, I came about hula hooping um, in like, uh, I was 20. So like six years ago. And at first it was like more of a, like a hobby and, and something to like get me moving and, 
and uh, just in my body and learning something new. Um, and I really, uh, like I essentially just like YouTubed like hula hoop tutorials and stuff. And uh, I, I think the form of hula hooping that, I, that I'm uh, specialized in is uh, more like a flow art. There's like a real kind of flow art community online and and around the world and it's it's kind of yeah it's just like prop manipulation and uh like kind of using flow dance with prop to kind of make beautiful illusions and shapes and what have you um and so yeah um yeah and i've just been doing that for six years and uh I started teaching about three years ago at a studio on the Danforth um which has been really fun and primarily teaching adults and uh just kind of all levels all levels welcome but uh since the pandemic I haven't been teaching a uh, hoop at that studio for obvious reasons um but yeah i i always uh try to uh make sure that i'm using the term hula hooping because i don't want to be posing as something that i'm not or or um kind of misleading anybody um in that way so yeah i always generally try to say hula hoop <laughs> mm -hmm. I like you've it's always been pretty prevalent in like circus arts and mm -hmm. and so yeah I think there's there's been like a movement of like circus arts kind of becoming more accessible and more uh mainstream and and kind of widespread um mm -hmm. so I think it's kind of got more uh like more popular through the popularity of circus arts and what have you. Mm -hmm. And in what kind of venue or circumstance would you perform if you were doing just hula hooping? Um, so at festivals, uh, I've done a lot of performances at festivals and um, dance events. I remember my very first hula hoop gig was, I think, I don't know, four or five years ago. And it was at this dance event uh called daybreaker which was this cool uh event that travel like it it was like a moving event that would happen maybe four or five times out of the year and it's like a morning dance party that starts at six in the morning i think the first hour is like yoga and intention setting and then the last two hours is just like a really fun sober early morning dance party um, wow that's yeah so wholesome and healing <laughs> yeah yeah it was really cool because it was like you're seeing people like show up in their like work suit undress into their like dance like dance pants and then like and then transition back into work life before going to work oh, okay um, so it's not like it wasn't like an overnight camping type festival no no so this was yeah this was just a like a single one one morning uh event um and so yeah that was my first gig and then I I performed there a couple more times they they did some like uh they did like a special event for international women's day I remember and yeah that was so that's like it's just like a dance event and and then they take time and like make space for a performance to happen while people are dancing and stuff like that and so I would just kind of like squeeze through the, the dancing crowd and then get a big circle going and then like perform for like 10 minutes or something. And, and then the partying continues. So yeah. It's so fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I miss dancing with humans. Yeah. And do you get into this? It seems like when I watch your videos, it seems like you're in this like flow state, like this really meditative state of mind. Mm -hmm. would that be would that be accurate obviously yes. you have to be pretty very focused I, I would guess but also you seem very relaxed and present yeah yeah I think for me it is very much the kind of 
I mean, I think when you're learning something new, it's hard to get into a flow state unless you're like just working on one thing over and over again to the point where you can kind of relax into it and, and be less in your head and more in your body. Um, but yeah, I, for me, it is really like the idea of kind of getting out of my head and into my body and being non-judgmental and not like editing myself as I'm moving and, or trying to think too much. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's a really, any kind of flow art, um, or just dance in general or, or music, um, can really like push, push your limits to, to leaving your headspace and, and getting into a flow. And it's like, it's been so, so healing for me. That's like such medicine. How so? Um, just giving, like setting time aside to be playful and to move, like to be in rhythm, uh, to listen to rhythm. Like I like to listen to music, but sometimes I, I won't listen to music and just um, kind of flow to my own rhythm. Um, yeah, something, something just about getting into your body and, you know, even if it feels stagnant, just kind of working through it and, uh, eventually, or hopefully, uh, getting into that flow state where you can really like kind of tune into your breath and your own body's rhythms and, um, like in in a in a way it's kind of like escapism because you're really present and you're not worrying about you know what you've got going on tomorrow or what's going on two hours from now or that you know bill that you have to pay or whatever it's it's like a real like present form of of uh escapism as well as like yeah like escapism but also really going inward and just being with yourself with, with movement, with shapes, with rhythm, you know, just kind of leading yourself in that way. It's really interesting. Cause when you say escapism, I think it has a pretty negative con connotation in general for people. And I think that's because it means that you're escaping. Um, it has this implication, like you're, you're escaping the pains of everyday life to go into a world that's not real because you can't, you can't deal with those emotions. Mm -hmm. But I guess this, this is a healthy form of escapism. You're escaping things that you don't necessarily need to be thinking about right now. And you're turning, yeah. you're, you're actually more present. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you're escaping the future and the past for the present. And yeah. Um, Which will help yeah. you deal with things. Oh. Oh, yeah. most definitely. Like I've, I really found when I was first, like really like ob almost obsessive about hula hooping and learning new things. And it was like, I, there was a, a time in my life where I, you wouldn't see me without my hula hoop. I mm -hmm. would just bring it everywhere. Um, and I feel like, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really helpful for like grounding yourself and being present and, and not, you know, as you said, kind of worrying about things that you don't need to worry about in that, in any given moment. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like escapism in the sense that you're escaping all like external worries that, you know, may uh, kind of put weight on you most of your days and most of your time. Um, yeah, so I would say it's like a, po a positive way to escape regular stress of life and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> are there every, ever days where you feel like you are sort of just going through the motions and you're not able to achieve that, that, um, flow state? Yeah, definitely. There's days where I'm like hitting walls, uh, that I've created within myself where, you know, maybe I'm, I am editing myself as I go or like judging what I'm doing 
or even just like physically not feeling as warm and uh, fluid in, in my body. And so then it's like the fight against the mind and the body kind of thing. Um, yeah, I've, you know, I think everybody has those days, regardless of what it is you're doing and you practice. And um, I think it's like, for me in those moments, I always try to tell myself like, okay, you know, have patience with myself because I would have patience with anybody else, you know, like when I'm teaching students and they're getting frustrated, I have so much patience and compassion for that person. And so I'm like, okay, I need to have this for myself as well. Um, and, and just be like, just feel good about the fact that I gave it a shot or that I tried or that I, you know, sat in that uncomfortable feeling and, um, recognize that it, it won't be like this forever. Maybe it's just today, tomorrow, this week, but, uh, knowing that, um, I, you know, I'm not stuck here. I'm able to move through things and I will be able to find that like flow trance like state again, if not today. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that helps you get to that? Yeah. Um, I find, uh, listening to some groovy tunes that I enjoy and just, you know, when you, there's a song that you really like and you just find yourself like, uh, just moving your body to it, even if it's unintentional. So finding like a good playlist or some tunes that can really just like kind of get you out of your head and, and just like feel that natural movement. Um, I really find that doing like a, a light warm up can help because then you're literally physically working out the like cricks and cracks of your body, which can help you like easily transition into more fluid mo movement. Um, and then sometimes like just if you're feeling stagnant, like just accepting that and maybe doing something different, like moving, moving very slow or lying down and doing like simple kind of movements on the floor or stretches, um, lots of just like breathing and yeah, just kind of accepting where you are. And yeah, as you said, just like trying not to put that pressure of like, I was planning on doing this today and this has to get done. Cause as you said, that's like most likely going to be your hardest barrier to cross. Are you able to hoop to any kind of music or is there, is there, I'm guessing there are some kinds of music that are much more conducive to the movements that you're doing. Yeah. I definitely enjoy the challenge of hooping to like all different genres um, because I find it can pull different movements out of me that I might not have, uh, discovered if I'm listening to the same kind of music all the time. Um, yeah. So, um, for example, uh, one thing that came to mind is, um, like moving to like really soft, beautiful piano music can, can be like can just pull a totally different flow out of you because you're listening to like kind of really soft, normally like not super um, fast tempo um, music. And, um, you know, that'll just bring out something way different than if I'm listening to, I don't know, some sort of like up-tempo dance tune disco tune or something um but yeah I would say generally uh I like I so for my dance classes I created these four playlists they're each an hour long and they're just kind of like fun dancey tunes that I picked so that I could just put on the playlist and not have to worry about the music while I'm teaching. And so I, I find I, I gravitate to those uh, sometimes because sometimes just like the pressure of finding the right song can like get in the way of what you're actually doing. Um, and so sometimes I'll just throw those on and, and like, you know, there's, I think one of the first songs is I Feel Love by Donna Summers, which is like this, super fun disco tune that's like pretty long and it it has a long intro so it like gives you some time to like 
warm up into it and then the like climax of the song is like you know Mm -hmm. you're like warm and you're into it and ready to kind of move on from there um again this word flow the the flow of the song has to be right oh totally yeah yeah so do you is it mainly that you're improvising movement or are you uh do you sometimes choreograph um a dance to a specific song um i I would say mainly improvisation, Um, but throughout the years, you kind of have, like it's similar to soloing on an instrument. Like you kind of have these little combinations or these little like pockets that you have a tendency to like gravitate to and then kind of uh, create like variations on the theme, if you will. And so it's, it's similar where it's like you have enough vocabulary to string together a sentence um, and it's it's all improvised in the moment, but you might find yourself uh, kind of re- repeating similar motives and uh, themes. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah, cool. And depending on the type of music too, you probably have different sort of motives for- Totally, yeah. Upbeat song versus- a uh, more lyrical. Yeah, definitely. Um, Yeah, like going back to uh, this one artist, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting his name right now, but it's like he has this one album that's just like all beautiful piano music and it's just one piano and you can hear everything, all, all the sounds coming from the piano. So you can hear when he's like pressing down the keys and when the keys are being lifted and you can hear the pedal going and like, it's just like really intimate uh, and very like emotional uh, music. And when oftentimes when I put that on, I'm just, I'll just find myself like just spinning, just slowly spinning, not doing tricks, just like getting into a real like trance of, uh, yeah just spinning with the hoop sometimes I'll like put the hoop on my head and just spin so that the hoop is like sustained on my head and just like Uh get into this real this real uh kind of like soft but also very intense flow state whereas Mm -hmm. you know if I'm playing something more upbeat I'm gonna be like uh a lot more rhythmic in in what I'm doing and uh, feel have more of a tendency to do some like kind of tricks and illusions with my hoop while uh in while engaging with that rhythm and that tempo that's so awesome yeah that's fun yeah I would definitely say like my goal with teaching is to like provide enough tools for somebody to find a flow even if they're even if it's like you know, you've got two tricks or like, you know how to spin with the hula hooper, you know, like just providing a, a, a starting place for somebody to like connect with movement in that way, opposed to focusing on being like, oh, I can do this crazy trick with my body in this circle. So um, what is the, what is the fascination with circular shapes I I I mean clearly I have it too since I have a circle tattoo but like how would you describe this like magnetism you have towards this geometric shape uh well I, mean, I can tell you afterwards my I, yeah, I know, yeah I've thought a lot about it but yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, always, I always have to explain my tattoo right. because people are always like even I remember when I got it the guy that was giving me the tattoo he was like He had like tattoos of like the Virgin Mary with like blood coming out of her eyes. Right. But he still thought he was in the position to be like, this is what you want to get. And he was super judgmental. And I was like, damn, that's not cool. It wasn't. I was like, okay, I guess I'm going through with this. But if, if I, if I could have um, gotten an appointment with someone else at that point, I would have. Yeah. Um, But yeah, anyway, I get that a lot. Just this kind of like, oh, what interesting yeah what, what does that mean mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it's 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 cool because actually like I 
I was thinking my next tattoo would just be a, a circle as well. Yeah. Cause I've, I've always really wanted that. And I'm just trying to figure out where to put my it. My only regret is not getting it bigger and bolder because at the time I was like, I think I was 19 mm-hmm. and it was my first tattoo. Well, it's still my only tattoo. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I like where it's placed. I really like where it's placed, but I think part of the reason it's so small is also because of a bit of fear. Mm -hmm. Um, But you should just get another bigger one that's (laughs) encircling the smaller one. Yeah. This is my older self giving love to my younger self. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It would still look pretty cool. Um, (laughs) But yeah, to answer your question, um, I just think. I think everything we do is circles. I think every part of like existence is circles, the planet, the universe, Mm -hmm. like everything, like everything has a cycle and a cycle to me represents a circle. Um, And uh, I think, yeah, I think there's something to recognizing cycles within our lives and within history. And, um, you know, it's it's kind of like the idea of, of like oneness, but also, you know, like they're not really being an end or a beginning per se, but there's, there's kind of always at the same time, always an end and a beginning. Um, and you know, recognizing when you do recognize a cycle or a circle in your life and seeing something come back to you, like recognizing the growth and the change and where you're at, at that point as to where you began at that same point. And, um, you know, I just, you know, being a woman, our life is based around cycles and, you know, the moon is based around cycles, our whole planet and, uh, and time in a way, like, you know, time's not linear. And so it's just this idea of layers upon layers and, um, like a circle feels like a very healing shape to me, Mm -hmm. even within like music and within movement, there's something about repetition that, um, that can be really relaxing. Like, even if you're just like sitting and, and you're, if you're feeling anxious, like if you start to just like draw circles with your body and feel your breath as a circle and, uh, and same with music, like something just about repeating the same line or the same loop over and over and really like sinking into it. And, uh, um, yeah, again, it's just kind of like, become being present by, by being able to kind of sit within a cycle or, or observe a cycle or move within a circle. Um, yeah, those are just, just a few ideas I have around circles. I would love to hear, uh, Mm -hmm. your take on circles. Um, well, you, you stated a lot of it. Um, at first, honestly, I when I I had the idea, I, it just struck me as a very beautiful, very simplistic in the good sense of the word, um, calming geometric shape mm-hmm. that was sort of grounding. And I put it on the right side of my body um, because I'm, I suppose, because I'm right dominant, and um, it just felt more grounding there, um, and. I think of it, you know, it's obviously there's some celestial kind of implications, the moon, the sun, the earth, but then as you say, there's also these sort of like the flow of energy, um, a reminder to kind of keep the flow going. And also this, it creates this um, sort of focal point, the sense of focus, um, and also this sort of sense of uh, boundaries too, to have this sort of outline of a circle, like as if there's sort of a space in there, Mm -hmm. um, that one can be in and draw for yourself. 
um, yeah, I just, as the years go by, I just think of more and more, um, ways that it is meaningful. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, I can't think of anything more profound to put on your body. Mm-hmm. I can't think of anything more profound. And that's why now that I'm kind of like, I've entertained the idea of getting another tattoo and I do have some ideas, but nothing seems to compare like nothing, everything else seems in my mind to be a little, um, surfacey or like, I mean, there's some images that I really love that I think would look beautiful, but yeah, I think it's a great idea for tattoo and you should totally get it. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely will. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when you were talking about circles, I was just like remembering. Um, so uh, I've done a lot of work with my good friend, uh, Veronica Johnny, who is the leader of uh, the rock band that I'm in, the Johnnies, and also um, uh, she's an indigenous arts educator. And, um, and so I've done um, some work with her going into uh, schools around Toronto um, and just kind of helping her uh, teach her workshops and just kind of, you know, be a helper in that way. And the, the like very powerful thing that I'm sure a lot of people have uh, experienced is like just the act of like sitting in a circle, uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, and, um, you know, as we said earlier, like at at meetings, you know, usually you're in some form of circle or something where you can see everybody and you're kind of an equal uh, function within the circle. And, mm-hmm. and then um, just kind of the practice and ritual of, of going through the circle and having everybody, uh, you know, give their input on a, on a given topic, or even if it's just introducing yourself and what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, And yeah, just how powerful it can be to like sit in a circle with people and, and uh, cause you know, you're really creating this like equal playing ground for everybody and giving everybody equal space and opportunity to uh, participate or observe. And yeah, I miss sitting in circles with people. (laughs) I think we live in a, a culture that's very obsessed with um, fear and outrage and scandal. And, uh, it's really easy to fall into it. Right. Like, um, I notice it even in like my, my choice of viewing and listening, you know, um, uh, you know, true crime podcasts and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like horror movies. I like thrillers and, and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. Right. But, Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it takes a bit of cajoling to be like, no, I need to laugh today. Or I need to like, even if it's not my instinct right now, right away, I know that I need that laughter medicine. Mm -hmm. I need that joy and simplicity and, um, positive, messaging yeah totally yeah it's I I think that there's a real like effort needed to um to make space for that because it is so easy especially like in today's time right now like how easy it is to focus on things that are stressful and and you know, the hardships of, of what people are going through right now. Um, and so, yeah, like giving yourself a day to be like, you know what, I'm not going to read the news today and I'm just going to like get silly and, you know, (laughs) like just make weird, like, I don't know. It's, there's something real about like tapping into your younger self where it's just like, you know, just no, no judgment, just, being and just existing and being so present and Mm. uh and yeah being like unapologetically like ridiculous or Mm -hmm. silly or whatever I've realized like 
I, I could not date or associate closely in a platonic sense with anybody who was not able to be silly or goofy. Yeah. Yeah. Like I've realized more and more how important that is, whether it's like talking in weird voices or just laughing or laughing at being able to laugh at oneself and have that like, um, friendly, loving, self-deprecating humor, or, you know, like just, um, that's so important for my mental well-being, And I think probably most people's. Totally. Yeah. That's something that I've really realized in the past couple of years. Cause I've, I've, I found I've like, I'm, I've always been kind of generally like a, I don't know, like happy, energetic person, but I really recognize that who I surround myself with um, can, Im- can impact and either like feed, feed that like happy, goofy energy or like strip it down and, and leave me with no, no, uh, no energy to be that person. And I feel better when I'm, uh, when I am able to access that side of me. Um, and so, yeah, like, it's really valuable kind of recognizing like what relationships and, and uh, instances feed your like positive goofy side and, you know, it's good to recognize that and, and to be able to set boundaries and to be like, no, I can see this person, but, uh, you know, I have to put a time limit on it or else it like sucks all my energy out for the day Mm -hmm. or something, you know, Mm -hmm. and just recognizing, uh, yeah, just kind of protecting yourself in that way. Oh, totally. And it takes a certain amount of self-reflection and self-awareness to do those check-ins, you know, like those kind of Cause it's not always so obvious when you're in a situation that's draining you or you're consuming, um, some kind of media outlet, um, that is draining you. Sometimes it can be so subversive and so, um, subconscious that you only realize after you're already drained, um, or you're like, why am I feeling so depressed right now? Or why am I feeling so tired? Or why do I feel anxious? Um, so yeah, just doing those check-ins and noticing those patterns and like, how do I feel after I interact with this person or this um, outlet? Totally, yeah. Yeah, and and kind of practicing being able to leave something where where it is you know like I've had situations in the past where I've met up with a person and we've discussed really intense deep uh topics and um something that you know required a lot of energy and focus and and empathy um and then like through doing that realizing like okay I don't need to carry that with the rest of my day, like Mm -hmm. learning how to leave it where it was, accept it for what it is, like, you know, respect whatever happened, but then be like, okay, like now moving on to different part of my day, you know, Mm -hmm. like not holding on to things um, as much. So like, yeah, just like practicing releasing things that don't serve you in any given moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah so important Mm -hmm. yeah and that's like it's interesting uh like being a musician and making music because you know engaging with with you know so many different artists and different musicians from all different walks of life and experiencing how people uh what their process is in terms of like collaborative music making and and what have you and it's, it's like really beautiful when you find people that, that can be silly and goofy, but still get the work done, you know, Mm -hmm. and like show up for rehearsal and have a good time. And we all have a laugh, but we also, you know, do what we do, what we came to do and, and like, uh, have a a lightness and like a light approach towards work and towards Mm. creation um 
And yeah, I, yeah, I find it's like, it's so beautiful when you find those people and mm-hmm. it just makes like making music and, and working uh, such a joy. And it gives, it gives me energy. You know, if I, sh- if I go to re- a rehearsal, like, or if I, you know, before COVID had a day of like three rehearsals or whatever, at the end of the day, I just be like vibing so much. Cause I'm mm-hmm. just like, Oh, all this good music, mm-hmm. all these good people. Like how lucky am I to, you know, be fed mm-hmm by Mm. these experiences yeah 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 oh I'm definitely familiar with that and sometimes when you haven't had that for a long time or you're in a rut and then you have that you're like you just come alive again you just yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally get that yeah there's a lot of people that take themselves and others too seriously um yeah or that they're just caught up in that like that narrative which is hard for all of us where it's kind of like play is seen as something you do either outside of work or when you're a child or um it's like okay get serious this is work now you know mm-hmm. and there isn't this paradigm where play and work can coexist and be like just because you're playful and light and joyful doesn't mean you're not um you're not getting things done or you're not working towards a productive goal right yeah yeah totally and and you know like it's it's as I said it's just interesting when you you know oftentimes you can pretty instantly recognize uh whether somebody is kind of more serious and more like inward and and so you know you're not really like changing your personality, but you're like, you're being flexible and, you know, you recognize, okay, this is the kind of person that I'm working with today. And so, you know, I'm still going to be myself, but maybe like tone some things back a little bit just to make everybody feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, Which, which is interesting. And and I don't, I don't know, there's definitely like a, a negative connotation towards like, changing your behavior around certain people but I think I think there can be a positive thing where it's like you're actually just learning how to most efficiently engage with each person because everybody's different and so if you're able to communicate with this person in this way but then this other person you have to use a different set of tools to interact and to connect I think that's uh like I think that's a, a smart way of uh, learning how to relate to all different kinds of people and work with all different kinds of people. Yeah. And it's not realistic or necessarily optimal to be the same with every single person that just, it actually would be concerning. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're, if you're exactly the same with your mother as you are with, um, I don't know, a producer you just met or your boyfriend or yeah. your dog. I mean, <laughs> I talk to my dog like this. I'm like, hello, little baby. <laughs> I'm not going to be going and doing that in a professional context. But mm-hmm. like, as long as you have this like core integrity and sense of moral principles or sense of um, who you are at your core, mm-hmm. but also realizing that there isn't one steady I'm not like I think there are some attributes that um that are intrinsic to us and that are fairly stable but I think we're always changing and we're always transitioning to new um states of being and awareness and to think that we're just going to be this static um person is um just not realistic or even helpful Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. it's a it's a true skill relating (laughs) it is it really is Mm -hmm. well yeah you're gorgeous and uh, (laughs) extremely talented and I'm very honored that you would speak to me well thank you likewise to you (laughs) Marlena it's Um, been a pleasure uh kind of seeing your artistic journey through the social medias oh thanks you too (laughs) yeah I'm I I love the I love the alter ego especially it gives you it gives you a lot of space I think to um try things that Valentina might not but you can 
channel things into this character this totally um yeah that's that's really cool um where can people find you if they want to book you or speak to you or collaborate with you um so you can find me uh on my website, Facebook, or Instagram. Those are primarily my three main forms of uh, contact and engagement. And uh, lucky for you, my name is the same across the board. So it's Katie Moonbeam. Um, and not it's not a beam, not a beam, beam. but a bean. <laughs> yes. By the way, your grandma is sounds so badass to name you that. Like, yeah. is this the Italian side? No, no, no it's the English side. Okay. I'm like, wow, no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, yeah, my, my, so my Nana, my English grandmother, um, was uh, kind of around the time that I was born. She was like a really coming into herself as an artist and uh, writing children's books and and painting and writing poetry. It was kind of just like this kind of, I don't know, this part of her life that she finally gave, gave way to. And so I think w- when I was born, she was like in the height of her artistic self and mm-hmm. uh, called me Katie Moonbeam. <laughs> so it was that Valentina, which is already a very um uh, expressive name mm-hmm. valentina katie moonbeam morelli yeah <laughs> uh, it's a mouthful <laughs> is, it, is it your is it your legal name um no no uh this so a nickname type thing yeah it's a nickname that my uh that my and it's kind of like based off of my middle name so my middle name is caitlin with a k so k-a-t-y or k-a-t-l-y-n and so katie moonbeam is k-a-t-y and then moon beam bean. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. But I hear that if I just start signing all my legal documents as such, then it will officially be <laughs> legal <laughs> name. But yeah, it's my my artist name and a name that my my lovely Nana gave to me. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's katiemoonbean.com. Yeah. And then on Facebook, Katie space moonbean, all the moonbean is one word. And then on Instagram, all one word, Katie moonbean. And it's okay. Katie with a K and a Y. Okay, great. Yeah. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. This is a lot of fun. Okay. All right. See you well, soon, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. I look forward to seeing more episodes. All right. All right.